Hi everyone, this is Courtney. And Brandon. From Ruby Red Farm. We are gonna be building another raised bed for our greenhouse. And so we'll take a look. Just gonna show you the steps and show you how we like to do it here. So this raised bed design can be used for either a greenhouse setting or outdoors. It is designed to reduce the amount of dirt that you're having to purchase. We are able, because we have manure here at the house, we can use that manure. We also actually have some topsoil from planting a tree recently. So we're gonna be able to reuse a little bit of the dirt already, but we're also going to put it in in a way that hopefully lets you not have to buy as much dirt if you're designing some raised beds. Raised beds, one of the biggest limitations with those is that they're expensive. We'll show you the steps as close up as we can, so let's go ahead and get started. To start, our raised bed is actually made from a shipping crate. So we got these for free from my husband's work. They were gonna have to pay to dispose of them. And instead, we offered to take them off their hands. We have ours tilted forward slightly to make sure that the water drains in one specific direction rather than staying stagnant. You can build your raised beds out of whatever material you like. So we'll show you how all this works. millimeter plastic. So once your plastic's cut, you're going to spread it out and make sure you're getting it down into the corners. Okay. So once you have your plastic in place, then you can't forget you got to drill those holes. So for step three here then we're going to fill the bottom up with wood and cardboard. With the wood we didn't want anything bigger than about six inches in depth. We're still trying to keep a good 10 to 12 inches of dirt as that top layer. However, filling the bottom we know it's not going to decompose probably even in within our lifetimes but we're filling it with these different materials just to take up space. At the end of the day, the plants we're planting in here are not going to need more than 10 inches or so of soil. And as the added perk, over time, yes, these things could decompose. Get it all in there, put a nice layer of water down, and move to the next step. Step four, then, is to add manure. We have plenty of it on our property. We keep hogs, and so we have a nice manure pile. We also have chickens. We pull from this aged manure, though, to add lots of good nutrition to the plants. Next up then is peat moss. So we're gonna be layering peat moss in throughout this process. Peat moss again, just adds a nice amount of nutrition, but it also kind of keeps that soil light and fluffy, which is a big deal because the top soil around here has a lot of clay. We're gonna mix that in thoroughly. You'll see me also rake it in here in a second. Don't worry about me touching that manure again. It's been aged. It actually doesn't even have a smell to it. We're moving on now to topsoil. So topsoil is essentially the next to last step here, but as we get this topsoil, we have to just kind of spread it around, get it evenly spread out. This has a little bit of grass in there, don't worry about that. But at your own house, you can either purchase topsoil, or in our case, we got lucky and had a little bit of topsoil available from what we had purchased last year, as well as from getting a tree planted this year. Moving on to some soil boosters. So first up is Performance Organics. I actually really like this. This again is just adding some dark color to the soil, improving the texture of the soil, but of course improving the nutrition of the soil so that our plants have a better shot of growing well. We also have mushroom compost, which I've not used this before, but was just kind of curious if it made a big difference. It is organic as well. Just again, trying to improve the biodiversity, if you will, of the soil within this bed. I think a lot of people make the mistake of simply putting topsoil in, and that is not going to be enough to grow vegetables. So we go through raking, chopping, getting everything mixed as best we can. That is going to make a huge difference because you can put all of it in there. That's great. But if you don't mix it, it's like not chewing your food. You need the plants to be able to get to that nutrition. Otherwise, you were just wasting your time. The final step of the process then is to trim the plastic and just get things looking nice. This really is more for cosmetic purposes. It doesn't exactly matter if you trim the plastic or not. 
However, it's going to hopefully look a little bit nicer once you get things trimmed. This is, again, the final step. It's a really not that bad of a process, guys. There you have it, folks. That is a nice, simple way to put together a raised bed without spending quite as much money. All in, I would say we probably only have about $25 in materials in this. If you had to buy the topsoil and if you had to buy the manure, you're maybe looking at more like 50 to 75. Still quite a bit cheaper though than a standard raised bed would cost. So this took about an hour to complete to start to finish. Obviously we already had the, the box set in place. Yep. Filling it took a little bit of time. It's pretty straightforward. Hope you guys are inspired to go and do something similar at your own houses. For now though, this was Courtney. And Brandon. From Ruby Red Farm. I hope you all have a great day.